hey guys welcome back to the channel so today I'm gonna be fulfilling a dog pound members request you guys asked how do I make my pork ribs on a Weber kettle step by step so today I'm gonna show you how to make pork ribs on a charcoal grill Weber kettle and if you've been rolling with the dog father from day one guys I'm sure you'll appreciate this intro it's a blast from the past so let's get it All right, guys, so as I said, I'm going to show you how we're going to do pork ribs on a Weber kettle. And today we're going to keep it Central Texas style and we're going to do salt and pepper. Now, keep in mind, you can put whatever you want on the ribs, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple with our uh, Central Texas flavors of salt and pepper. So let's get these ribs prepped. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so here we have it. We've got our uh, St. Louis style uh, cut pork ribs. I bought these at my uh, local grocery store. If you want to make it simple for yourself, just look for these that are already cut this way. I'm going to later get into some videos where we're going to do spare ribs and I'll show you how you can cut it down to this. But for the sake of uh, just keeping it nice and easy for the beginners, this is what you want to look for if you want that uh, St. Louis style cut pork rib. So let's go ahead and get these things cut out of the package. Now here's a good tip. Whenever I get ready to take these out of the package, I pretty much try to keep this like an envelope. So I'll cut on one side and then pull these uh, ribs right out of it. That way all your juices stay right inside here. So let's go ahead and get this cut. Okay, so now we've got our pork ribs out of our package and I'm going, I've got bone side up here so you can actually see the membrane and the bones and uh, typically you might even see a little flap here of skirt that will uh, trim off. But basically all we're going to do right here is just kind of all of these little fatty ends like this. We're just going to go ahead and kind of trim those off of there just to kind of clean it up a little bit. If you guys are wondering, I am using my uh, Victorinox 6-inch six, six uh, boning knife. And typically what I like to do guys is over here on this end you're always going to have this flappy meat part. I typically will kind of come in maybe one or two bones and trim this off and basically that just squares up this rack. So I'm going to come in here cut this just like this and we're not going to waste this meat guys. We can use this later. We can throw it on the pit and smoke it by itself with this cook if we want to but don't waste your meat. If you're going to do something with it later just put it in a, in a Ziploc bag throw it in your freezer until you have enough accumulated to do whatever you want to do with it but don't throw it away. We're going to go ahead and get this membrane pulled off of here and basically what I do is I take my knife and I'll run it right underneath the uh, membrane between the membrane and the bone and just kind of lift up a little bit trying not to tear it but we're lifting up a little bit because we want to try and be able to grab it with our uh, paper towel all right gang so we now have our ribs trimmed up we've got the membrane pulled off the back and now it's time to season them now again i said we're just going to keep it simple we're going to go salt and pepper so what i've got here is just some good old-fashioned kosher salt and we're going to sprinkle some of that on here and you want to sprinkle high guys so you can get a good even coating all the way across your rib and then kind of pat it in. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing on our meat side. Alright gang so as you just saw we just got our salt put onto our ribs and I told you we're going to do salt and pepper but the pepper we're using is a uh, 30 grind from Fiesta. It's a coarse ground black pepper. So it's got some pretty good sized granules of, uh, of pepper. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the uh, salt pull a sweat out of the ribs for a little bit. And that will give us a natural binder. So when we sprinkle our pepper on, the pepper will, uh, it will bind to the rib and we'll be ready to go. So in the meantime, since we got our ribs set to the side and we've got them covered, we're going to go ahead and fire up our Weber kettle. So let's go get the kettle set up, all right? Let's go. All right, guys, so some things that I would absolutely recommend for this cook is uh, slow and sear. If you don't have a slow and sear, uh, check the links down in the description box. Uh, and I do have, uh, have this uh, linked in my uh, Amazon store if you can't happen to find one. But this thing right here is awesome for doing a long cook. You put your charcoal in on this side and you put your water or uh, whatever liquid that you want to put in. You put it in this side and it's just it makes for a great cooking environment. Also, I'll recommend using disposable half pan. 
we put this down on this side because our ribs are going to sit over here and this is basically going to catch a lot of the juices. This helps keep the, uh, the grill or the cooker, helps to keep it a little clean. So you definitely want to make sure you put a uh, catch pan in here. And if you don't have a slow and sear and you're just going to put charcoal over here because you could absolutely do that as well. You can add moisture into your pan here to try and keep your environment moist. So excellent thing to have. Next, we want to make sure we have a grate that has the hinge on it. So this is perfect for when you have your charcoal in here, your wood in here. If you need to add charcoal or add wood, you don't have to pull the grate out, pull your ribs off, all of that. You can just flip this thing over, add some charcoal, add some wood, whatever you got to do, and you're there. This rack happens to be a double hinge, so you have one over here for your charcoal side, you have one over here on your cook side. So if you had your ribs placed here, you could actually tilt this up and pour more moisture into your uh, pan if you're not using a slow and sear. So I strongly recommend getting a grate that has the hinges where it opens up and you can uh, add or whatever you need to do to your cook. All right. All right, so to get started, I'm using my little half chimney that I use for my pit barrel cooker. If you don't have one of these and you just have a regular uh, charcoal chimney, that's fine. Just put it maybe a third full of charcoal. So I'm gonna add my BNB briquettes. To get this lit, we're gonna be using a tumbleweed, guys. So again, if you don't have tumbleweeds, you don't have to. You can stuff the bottom side of the chimney with paper and light it that way. I happen to like using the tumbleweeds. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, tumbleweed lit, we're just gonna place our charcoal chimney right over top. And we're gonna let it light up our charcoal and let it burn it and uh, get it down to a white ash so we can get to cooking. All right, so now that we got our charcoal lit on our Weber kettle, let's get the pepper onto these ribs. And you can see it's a good little moisture developing here, so we're good to go. And we're gonna sprinkle this black pepper on. Remember, pat it in, guys. Never rub it around, always pat it in. We're going to flip this over we're going to get our meat side. Now typically what I'll do when I'm seasoning and I didn't mention when I was showing you the salt uh, application is sometimes you have a thinner side of your rack and a thicker side of your rack. So obviously on your thinner side you may need to go a little lighter on your seasoning and on your thicker side you might want to go a little heavier. So that's just a little tip so that you guys don't over season your meat sometimes. We're gonna make sure we get this pepper on the sides of this rib as well. And that there, guys, is what I kind of look for when I actually get these ribs seasoned. So, we're gonna let these ribs hang out here and let our charcoal come up to temperature and uh, get this uh, grill set up. And we'll get these ribs on. So I'll bring you back when we're gonna get these ribs on the grill. All right, guys, so I went ahead and pulled the charcoal chimney off of our grill. The charcoal is almost ready. Pulled the rack off. Now I've got my slow and sear and I've got my pan here exposed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take hot water. It just takes less time for this water to heat up if you use hot water. But we're gonna put hot water into our water trough here. And today we're gonna be using cherry wood. So I've got some cherry wood chunks that we're going to put on and this is going to give the uh, pork a good color and it's also a great flavor. So we're going to go ahead and get this charcoal dumped into this uh, slow and sear and we're going to get this grill set up. Okay, so we got our charcoal dumped in here that we set up and it's a good idea to have something that you can kind of move charcoal around with. Uh, kind of have it handy and uh, ready to go. And now we're just going to backfill and put a uh, more briquettes here on the opposite side. Okay, so now that we got our charcoal put in here, it's time to put our wood chips in. So again, we're using cherry wood. And finally, we'll get our rack put on. Now again, remember you have a hinge here and I can leave this open. It's not gonna affect the cook at all. And we've got a hinge here in case we need it, okay? But we're gonna get our ribs put on right here. But before we do that, got a little spray oil that we're gonna spray our grill with. So now our rack is sprayed down, so let's get these ribs on. So there's the star of the show, you guys. Got our nice little seasoned pork ribs, salt and pepper. We're gonna put it right over our catching rack here. And again, you don't wanna just throw it on there all stretched out like that. You wanna kind of form these ribs the way you want them to cook. I put them on, push the sides in, just to kind of get it nice and compact. Makes for a much more even cook and a better presenting rib later. And so there we go. We're gonna get the top on. Remember, this is your open vent for the top. Your fire is on this side. You want the vent on this side to create that offset cooking. 
Now we're gonna open this vent here, probably about a quarter. The bottom vent is wide open, guys. I do all of my controls from here, so we're gonna let this cook. All right, guys, so we just got our ribs onto our Weber kettle over there, and it's burning away with some B&B uh, &B oak briquettes, and we're using some cherry wood chunks to give it a nice color and a, a good flavor. Uh, I know some of you guys are gonna wonder, well, what is your cooking temperature? I don't really rely on a cooking temperature, guys. We're cooking by feel here. Uh, I find that you will really learn how to barbecue if you learn how to cook by feel and not necessarily just rely on set temperatures. I know that some of you are thinking, well, you know what, you're, it's easy for you to say, this is how I learned, guys. This is really seriously how I learned. And so I'm gonna kind of share that with you. So what we're gonna do here is we've got our charcoal in there, we've got our wood in there, we've got our ribs on, we're gonna cook the color. We're gonna let it go for about an hour. We'll come back and check it in an hour. Uh, between now and then, we're gonna put together a nice little spritz that we'll be able to spray onto these uh, ribs to keep them nice and, and uh, nice and moisturized and give them a good color. But we're gonna let this smoke away here and I'll see you guys back here in about an hour and we'll take a look at these ribs here all right all right guys so today for our spritz we're gonna be using our little spray bottle that I always like to use you guys ask about tell you go down into the uh, description box check out my Amazon links and you can find a sprayer on there that'll work for you we're gonna be doing this with uh, apple cider vinegar and honey but today we're gonna be using this Mike's hot honey just because I like a little kick. So we're gonna put these together. And what we did here was I went ahead and I put about a cup of ACV in here, apple cider vinegar, and about two tablespoons of honey. That's what we're gonna put on these ribs today, all right? All right guys, time to check our ribs. All right, so it's been about an hour and 10 minutes here since we last saw these ribs. And we can see they're cooking very well. It looks like it's drying up a little bit. So we got our spritz, we're gonna spray it on. And this is all we're gonna do right now, guys. We'll come back and check this again in about another hour. All right guys, we're about two and a half hours into this cook. So we can see our ribs have a really good color on them. They're coming along nicely. I think we're gonna go ahead and get them off and get them wrapped up, guys. Okay, so today we're gonna be wrapping in aluminum foil. And again, this is our shiny side in, shiny side in towards our ribs. And we've got the uh, butter spray that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna spray down some butter spray onto our foil, followed by some of our spritz. And we're gonna get these ribs placed right onto it. Okay, remember we're gonna go meat side down on these uh, on the foil guys, and then we're gonna repeat. We're gonna get our butter spray put on here, followed by our spritz, and now we're gonna get these guys wrapped up. Remember, be careful not to uh, poke a hole in your foil. All right, so we'll get these back on the grill. All right, so we got our ribs back on the grill. We're gonna get the lid put back on this thing. All right, guys, so now we got our ribs wrapped up. They're back on the Weber kettle. Now comes the time we're gonna get them tender. Be back here in a little while, we'll check it out, all right? All right, guys, it's been about 50 minutes since we uh, put these ribs on wrapped, and I'm gonna show you how we are gonna check them. We're basically gonna just open it up and kind of see our ribs there. So we're gonna take a toothpick and we're gonna slide it right in between the bones into the meat and just feel for tenderness. Now you wanna be very careful not to go all the way through and poke your hole into your uh, aluminum foil, but this will give you a good indication of the tenderness. And this actually feels pretty good to me, but it needs to go a little longer. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this back up and let it keep going. All right guys, so as you just saw, we just checked our tenderness and it's not quite where I want it to be just yet for my liking. So we're gonna continue letting it go in this aluminum foil now. For you guys out there that are the beginners, this is where you guys get to kind of feel your way through this. You know what we're doing, you know how we're checking our tenderness. We're gonna come back and check tenderness probably every 30 minutes. So you guys keep going until you get to the tenderness that you like. If you want it falling off the bones, that's perfectly fine. That's up to you. Let it go till it's falling off the bones. If you don't, then you monitor it and pull it off whenever you know you get to the tenderness that you want. So when I bring you guys back, I will have achieved the uh, tenderness that I'm looking for, that's my personal preference, and we'll pull the ribs off at that point and uh, we'll pick it up from there, all right? But you guys, by all means, continue on to the tenderness that you want. All right, guys, so 
we're back here it's been about another 30 minutes or so since you guys were last with me and I've got the tenderness that I'm looking for so at this point what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna apply some barbecue sauce now you can actually add whatever barbecue sauce that you'd like to use that's a personal preference thing so add whatever you like to use onto your ribs at this point guys there's no right or wrong you know to it but that's what we're gonna do now I'm gonna leave it right here in this foil as I do this and we're just gonna let this kind of glaze over and what we'll do is we'll come back to this here in about another um, probably about 10 minutes or so 10 or 15 minutes we we'll just give it a chance to glaze over here so I'll bring you back then all right guys so this sauce has had a chance to glaze in here for about 10 minutes or so and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it off of our foil Okay, so we got it here onto our grill now, and we're gonna apply our sauce to it. And the reason why these bones are coming off is because of when I peeled that membrane off the back of it, it peeled some of that skin off that actually holds the bones together on this side. So I'm not really too concerned about it. It's backyard barbecue. But we're gonna go ahead and get our sauce on it. And we're just gonna brush that sauce on, guys. And again, we're gonna give this about 10 minutes or so to kind of set on this rib and then we'll be able to get it off. All right guys, so hey, we got our ribs off of our grill. We've had them uh, resting now for about 30 minutes and so now we're gonna go ahead and cut into these ribs and let's do it. All right guys, so as you can see, we've got a great color on these ribs turned out really good I may have uh, overcooked them just a little bit which is not that big a deal this is backyard barbecue so it's all good whatever your preference is but um, let's go ahead and get these things sliced up here all right guys so we got our ribs sliced here and there's a good look at that rib there and you can kind of see that color on there. It looks pretty good. Overall, I think this uh, I think this cook came out to be pretty good. So, um, man, let's taste this rib. All right, guys, so before I taste this, hey, if you enjoy the barbecue content that I upload on this channel, then make sure you check out a couple of these videos that I've got listed right here. But uh, enough of that, I'm gonna get into this rib and I'll see you guys in the next video.